Len, please describe the market cap ETF range. So the market cap range is based on what are considered to be the benchmark indices of the various asset classes that they track. So we have a fund for each asset class, each of the major asset classes in South Africa. Uh, we have an equity fund which tracks the SWIX 40, which is considered to be the benchmark uh, index for uh, institutional asset managers in South Africa. And that simply gives you exposure to the most liquid stocks in South Africa and the biggest stocks in South Africa and it weights them according to their market capitalization. So typically you will have a bigger exposure to the bigger companies and smaller exposure to the smaller companies. Um, in, the, in the bond space we have a, a, a fund called the Gavi um, and the Gavi is essentially an index of government issued bonds. Again, more exposure to the, uh, to the bigger bonds and less exposure to the smaller bonds. And then we uh, in the inflation-linked uh, bond space. Now, inflation-linked bonds essentially hedge you against uh, inflation going up in South Africa. So your return is linked to inflation. And uh, again, that just tracks an index of government-issued inflation uh, debt. And then we have a fund that tracks um, the, the Tracky, which is a money market fund. And the Tracky is really an investable index. Uh, a lot of people you'll hear talking about the STEFI in the money market space. The problem with the STEFI is that there are illiquid uh, instruments in there that you can't actually buy readily. And liquidity is obviously very important for an index tracker fund. So we've got the four, uh, nice and low cost. Um, if someone wants to uh, construct a multi-asset portfolio, they can use each of these and make tactical or strategic allocations as they, uh, as they see fit. Institutions and retail investors will typically use these in the same way. And I think this is the, the, the beauty of exchange traded funds is that because they trade intraday, you can use them very tactically. So you can, you can buy them in the morning and sell them in the afternoon and realize the price difference uh, in that short space of time. But they're also very low cost, which makes them nice for holding over long periods of time because the, the low cost doesn't eat away at your performance. So we find investors use them strategically for long-term allocations, but they also use them tactically for short-term allocations. And um, uh, there really isn't a difference uh, in the way that institutions would use these as, as regards to how retail investors would use them. Um, and I think that's a big advantage for retail investors in particular, because most ETFs are priced for institutional investors, but um, th there's no differential in price between what an institutional investor would get and what a retail investor would get. So that's slight, it's a slight difference from the, the traditional unit trust market. Because these are exchange traded, typically whoever you buy them from will need to have some sort of a channel to trade on exchange. Um, now that can be a, a private client stockbroker, most of whom have online facilities now. And you know, if you're an ABSA client, uh, it's very easy to open an ABSA account with the ABSA stockbrokers and trade that online. There are also some uh, LISP platforms or, or linked investment service providers who provide access to exchange traded funds. The nice thing about exchange traded funds is that you can hold them in tax-free savings accounts as well. So it's possible to buy these and not be taxed on the capital gains and the distributions that you'll receive from holding them. Thank you, Len, for joining us and sharing your knowledge on the ETFs. Thanks, Andrew. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details, please visit our website.